This is UA Isn't Haunted and Other Reasons 1A Have Gotten Detention by The Dark Elf, read by Summer of Shadows. Summary. Aizawa tolerated his children, but they always get in trouble the second he turns his back. Or the five times 1A gets detention for doing something ridiculous and the one time they were completely innocent. Now, onto the story. 1. Convincing 1B their classroom is haunted. Screaming wasn't unheard of in the hero wing of UA. Considering Shota's own class and his spouse, he was more accustomed to hearing screams than most people. That being said, even he was surprised and alarmed to hear 20 children shrieking as they ran across the hall from the 1B classroom and into his own during his class's break period. Mr. Aizawa! Mr. Aizawa! One of the girls panted, gripping onto Tetsu Tetsu's arm hard enough that he half expected to see the boy's skin turn to iron to lessen the strain. Our class is haunted! Shota raised an eyebrow, eyes flicking to Yanagi in question. She lifted trembling hands as she shook her head. He sighed. Was just one day too long to go without having to deal with some form of chaos? Apparently, yes. Shota stood and carefully threaded his way through the horde of terrified children until he managed to get out of his classroom. While he highly doubted anything truly supernatural was occurring in the 1B classroom, it would be illogical and cruel to send terrified students back into the room without at least giving it a once-over. He hoped Zashi and the kids never heard about this. He would be asked to check in every closet and under bed for weeks. Stepping into the 1B classroom, the first thing he noticed was an odd, quiet whistling sound coming from seemingly nowhere. Shota frowned. He knew every inch of UA and every sound that it made. He had spent hours satisfying his own paranoia as he scoured every inch of the damn school until he could place something wrong based off of air currents alone. Nothing in the school made that sound. It almost sounded like... There was a thud above him, followed by muffled snickering, and Shota had the sudden urge to sleep for the rest of his life. His capture scarf wrapped around the vent and tugged it open, sending a dark figure tumbling from the shaft, only to be caught by a pouting shadow. Shota stared at Tokoyami. Tokoyami tiredly rubbed his eyes and blinked away the sudden glare of the room. Dark Shadow's head drooped as she refused to meet Shota's gaze. Ooh, Mr. Aizawa, did I sleep through my alarm? Tokoyami asked once his gaze focused enough to see who had evicted him from his nest. Shota felt slightly bad waking the poor kid up, but right now he had a different problem. Tokoyami, were you asleep? The boy blinked and nodded. It's easier to sleep if I'm up high. The words were plain enough, without any of the normal poetics that was a staple for interacting with Tokoyami, that Shota was certain that he really had woken the poor boy up, which meant... Shota's gaze moved to Dark Shadow, who squeaked and tried to hide behind Tokoyami. Dark Shadow, why were you trying to scare 1B? Tokoyami frowned and also turned to look at the sentient quirk. Dark Shadow looked down at her hands and twisted her fingers in an act that was eerily similar to Izuku. They were just being so mean while well, the blonde one was, but none of the others stopped him, and I get so bored when Fumi is asleep, and I thought that it was only fair if they were going to be mean, I could be mean back. Tokoyami looked like he wished he was still asleep in the vent. Shota couldn't help but empathize with the poor kid, because now... I hate to do this to you, Tokuyami, but Dark Shadow has detention for scaring 1B. I'll try to figure out something that is less painful for you. The bird-headed boy shrugged. It is deserved. She should not have acted out simply because she was bored. If I am allowed, I will simply nap through her detention time as well. Shoda nodded and ushered the boy and Quirk out of the room to have Dark Shadow apologize to 1B. Later, in the staff room, Shota put his aching head in his hands as Zashi patted his shoulder consolingly. Give a quirk a detention was not a space often filled on the teaching hero-ling's bingo card, but it was always an interesting story. Reason number two, leaving Izuku and Hatsume unsupervised. The first thing Aizawa did when he heard the explosion was check his phone. Explosions weren't abnormal at UA. His own class was infamous for them at this point. But, he was looking directly at the security cameras that would show him if a villain had broken into the school. So, there was really only one option for where this explosion comes from. 
Sure enough, his phone soon lights up with an incoming text to the teacher group chat. Dig Dug has sent a message. It was mine. Well, mine and one of erasers, apparently. At Awakened, can you meet me in the support wing? I refuse to handle two geniuses alone. Shoulda really should have expected it. Hatsume was destructive on her own, but the explosions only got large enough to shake the entire building when his own problem child was added into the mix. Yet the so-called Deku Squad had promised him that they would be together all day and that they would keep Yuzuku out of trouble. Traitors, the lot of them. Awakened has sent a message. On my way. At everyone, if you see any of Izuku's idiots, tell them to meet me in my office. He put his phone away before he could see the returning messages from his colleagues both confirming and teasing him about being such a dad. He was a dad. Why shouldn't he act like one? It was only logical. He had a suspicion that he would be sending Hisashi to print out yet another list of rules to hang in the 1A common room. Clearly, 16 were not enough to keep up with his hell class. Meeting with Power Loader in what remained of the support wing hallway and seeing the haunted look in his co-worker's eyes, while the two resident geniuses cackled and frantically scribbled their findings on whatever charred paper survived the blast, Shota knew that this would absolutely need to be a rule in the future, but that was a problem for future Shota. Current Shota had to figure out how to get his child and Power Loader's demon from the remains of the workshop when the explosion had taken out the floor in front of the door and destabilized the ground the two children were currently plodding on. Tenya and Asui, at least, had the decency to take their detentions without complaint. Uraka was insistent that they had only looked away from Izuku for a minute before his problem child slipped off. Todoroki only shrugged and informed him that helping Hatsume made Izuku happy, and technically, she was not listed on the not a chaperone list, so he hadn't seen the need to inform the others when the dreadlocked girl tugged Izuku off. Aizawa ended up printing off two new lists that night, and he owed Power Loader a new bottle of whiskey to make up for the destroyed classroom and hallway. On second thought, Shota needed to get something for Cement Toss, too. Reason number three, using Shoto as a stove. I want you to repeat what you just told me again, but slower. Shota wants nothing more than to slam his head into the, into the charred and half-frozen cabinet in what remains of the 1A dorm kitchen, but considering he had four sets of eyes, three guilty, and one deadpan as always currently staring at him, he figured restraint might be the way to go this time. Kaminari looks at Kirishima, who looks at Saro. Todoroki looks at none of them, and merely sits cross-legged and shirtless in the middle of the disaster zone. Well, Mr. Aizawa, Kami was talking about a video where someone cooked an egg on a sidewalk when it was super hot out. They asked Totobro if he could do that too. He said he remembered that his older brother could, but he had never tried it on his own, so we thought that we couldn't go wrong with an egg. Which we were right, the egg was just fine. It was the bacon grease that started the fire, and Kaminari put water on it, which only made it worse, and then... Shota held up a hand. He had heard them clearly the first time, as much as he might have wished for this to be nothing more than a fever dream. I... You're grounded, all of you. Saro blinked and looked at the others. Don't you mean detention? Shota sighed and stood from his crouch, already planning to take whatever open surface was available in the common area to take a nap. Maybe he could coax the problem child into a nap too, just to head off any more property damage while he was at it. Whatever, you four are cleaning this up, then you're going to cement toss to tell him exactly why he has to come to rebuild part of the 1A dorm for the fifth time this week. Three of the boys swallowed nervously. Todoroki shrugged again. Unsurprisingly, this was hardly the worst thing Shota had grounded him for. At least no felonies were committed this time. As Shota left the room, he heard Todoroki ask if anyone had seen his shirt. No one answered him. Reason number four. Burbgate. Shota knew from the second Nezu started laughing that something that wasn't his problem was going to become his problem very quickly. There were a few things that truly amused the rat beyond his sadistic glee when torturing humans, and all of those things centered around causing the most stress and chaos possible, which regrettably involved Shota's class more often than not. Maybe if he quit now, he wouldn't have to handle the fallout, 
Yeah, like the rat would let him leave when he enjoyed the chaos that surrounded his students. Most of them wouldn't survive without Shota to temper their more destructive ideas. The other teachers wouldn't be able to police 1A nearly as well as Shota did, his spouse included, though Zashi probably would have more success in controlling them. Izuku called them mom for a reason, after all. Instead, he took the entire freshly brewed pot of coffee with him as he headed to his classroom, only to instantly turn around the second he opened the door. Instead of 20 students sitting in their seats, awaiting his late arrival, there were 19 students in their seats waiting for him, along with a number two hero dressed in a UA uniform, with his hair gelled into a painfully familiar explosion of spikes. Shota flipped off the closest security camera as he chugged the whole steaming pot in his hand before turning back to his classroom and entering. Bakugo, detention. Tell other Bakugo he will be in detention with you. Hokugo squawked in protest, mixing flustered bird sounds with a frankly ridiculous impression of Shota's student. Honestly, if Izuku hadn't basically adopted the man as an older brother figure, Shota might have just thrown him out the window. Instead, he settled on leveling the hero with a quirk-fueled glare as he took his place at the podium. If Hawks wanted to pretend to be a student, who was Shota to deny him the full experience? Pop quiz! If later, he took a bowl of soup and fever medication to the real Bakugo, who had apparently been feeling sick all day, then it was just because he didn't trust Hawks to pass along the news that they would both have detention, not because he was going soft. Reason number five, teaming up with villains to prank Endeavor. Bless his students. Todoroki was less than 15 minutes late, returning from visiting his mother, and Shota had already been informed by the entirety of the Deku Squad and Yayorozu. Shota was almost thrilled at how they showed trust in him to find their missing classmate rather than go off on their own again as he was annoyed that it had taken them 15 minutes for them to decide that they would tell him. Izuku was the last one, approaching him with shaking hands and a frown tugging at their lips. His kid didn't like it, but they were trusting him, and Shota was so damn proud. Mostly, Shota was irritated that he had once again lost one of his kids while they were doing another routine task. He wondered if Nezu would approve 20 trackers as classroom supplies. Fortunately for his sanity, Shota received a call before his search had ever truly started. Tensei's laughing voice was less annoying than it could have been. Shota was still glad that he hadn't lost one of his few remaining friends. Enough so that he was willing to let the man catch his breath before demanding answers, as he wheezed out what could have been Shota's name. Show, show, you're not gonna believe this. Shota would believe a lot. But Tensei was right. He did not believe the man until he was in front of Endeavor's agency himself. Endeavor's bright pink agency. Endeavor's bright pink agency that was covered in an eye-burning pink glitter. Endeavor's agency that three young men, Shota's missing student, a white-haired boy who could only be the middle Todoroki sibling, and definitely not Dobby, but instead, a different man with dyed black hair and surgical staples around burnt skin, were taking pictures in front of it between fits of uncontrollable laughter. Tensei was positioned not far from the boys, custom wheelchair positioned firmly between the fuming form of one of Endeavor's sidekicks and Shota's kid and his family. Shota decided collecting his gremlin was more important than stopping Tensei from accidentally rolling over someone's toes and headed over to the three cackling forms bent over the scarred one's cell phone. Three heads popped up as he approached, but Shota only raised an eyebrow at the not-villain-an-extra-child. Explain. Todoroki, the youngest, shrugged. It was like that when we got here, sensei. For all the kid was good at lying, had to be with the number one hanging over him like a storm cloud, Shota knew his kids and their tells. Shota wouldn't meet his gaze, and instead was locked onto the scar below Shota's eye. His hands were tightly fisted at his sides to stop the tremble that Shota knew would be there, never outside of the safety of UA though, never where cameras could see him, never where Shota didn't have his teacher and his friends at his side to protect him from the backlash. Middle Roki also wouldn't look at him, blue eyes pointed at familiar red shoes that were scuffed and barely hanging together despite how much he knew Endeavor made as the number one hero. Broad shoulders curled inwards, even as the man took a half step in front of Shoto, as if to protect him from Shota. And, oh, 
how the similarities between Middle Roki and his child burned. Teasing be damned, Shota would steal all four of NG Todoroki's offspring and claim them as his own. Zashi certainly wouldn't stop him, and Izuku already adored Shoto, so three more siblings wouldn't be too much of a stretch. Totally not a villain, Roki, scoffed and crossed his scarred arms over his trench coat-clad chest. Shoto caught sight of a few drops of pink paint before flickering of a totally normal blue flames burnt it away. Shoto mentally shrugged. If there was no evidence, then legally he had nothing to report. And who was he to say that the not Dobby didn't have a public quirk use license? The scarred man shifted in front of both mini Rokies and glared familiar blue eyes at Shota in challenge. Fuck it. Nezu wanted to start up a villain reform class anyway. It was only kidnapping if they really didn't want to come, right? All three of you are grounded. We will discuss the terms of your grounding back at UA after we collect your sister. Shota turned. Thrilled that Shoto only hesitated for a second before dragging his brothers with them like three little lost ducklings, Shoto collected. And yes, maybe Shoto was a dad. He could admit that. But goddammit, if he wouldn't be a better dad than Enji fucking Todoroki, he would make sure Natsuo got new shoes that didn't pinch at his toes like Izuku told him other brands would. He would make sure Fuyumi received an offer to TA at UA where her skills would be appreciated more than her father's name. He would make sure that Shoto knew that his power was his to use as he wished and that Shoda was so proud of how far he had already come. He would make sure that Toya finally saw a real ethical doctor to help him with the burns and that his story, all of their stories, would be screamed loud enough that not even Endeavor's number one status could silence them. He would make sure his kids got the help they needed and the love they deserved. So yes, Shoto was a dad, but he was a fucking good one, too. Plus, the one time they were innocent. Shoto looked at his kids, all 24 of them. 24 pairs of eyes looked back at him. No one blinked. No one moved. And then he nodded and turned to the figure in the doorway. It wasn't them. Yagi coughed up blood as he looked between Shoto and the collection of students and adults that made up the man's... class? Family? and frowned at him. You didn't even ask them, Eraser. How could you possibly know that? I know my kids. They didn't do it. I suggest taking your accusations to someone that cares. Vlad, perhaps? I clearly saw Hawks and Dobby. Toya! 23 voices interrupted the retired hero. Shoda's own eyes flashed red as he glared at the men. Toya. Yagi grit out with a dark glare at Shota's kids, taking my desk from the staff room and putting it on the roof. I also saw Ashido and Kaminari sneaking out of the teacher's dorms right before I found my entire room covered in glitter. Shota raised an eyebrow. Do you know how many cameras there are in all the locations you mentioned? If Nezu had any proof of the Hellions doing any of that, he would already be in here to punish them himself. My kids didn't do anything, so you will leave them the fuck alone. This behavior is not acceptable. Speaking of unacceptable behavior, Fiumi's voice was as cold as the ice both she and Todoroki controlled, as her eyes caught on the former symbol of peace and held his gaze without flinching. Leave any children on rooftops recently, Yagi-san? Besides her... Toya flashed a feral grin, and Uraka cracked her knuckles. Even the ever-proper Ida and Yayorozu were glaring with barely concealed distaste as they shifted to more fully hide Izuku from sight. Izuku, who had tears streaming down their face as they pressed against Shoji and Dark Shadow. Izuku, who had finally trusted them enough to open up about how they had met All Might, and everything that followed. Izuku, who none of them would have met if that day on the roof had turned out differently. Izuku, who was Shota's problem child as much as they were the rest of the Hell Class's sibling. Shota's kids were demons spawned straight from the deepest pits of Hell, but this time, this time they had done absolutely nothing wrong. And if Yagi left with a black eye, then none of Shota's kids would say what happened. Their dad had clearly shut his hand in a cabinet door while looking for a jelly pouch. And that is the end of this part of the series. 
Um, this was part two of Shota Aizawa and his Feral Children by The Dark Elf, read by Summer of Shadows. I do have plans to read the next few works in the series. I am I do not have any confirmed dates on when I'll have that out. I record pretty much whenever I have time. Now, if you are still with me, I do have some bloopers for you guys. There was a thud above Tim. Above, yes, because that's a word. It's easier to sleep if I'm... Bleh. At everyone, if you see any of Izuku's idiots, tell them to meet me in my office. Damn, uh, the Deku Squad's about to be in for some major butt-kicking. <laughs> what remained of the support wing hallway and seeing the haunted... <laughs> Should have flipped off the closest security camera. <laughs>